All right, the project at hand right now is with this excavator bucket. So I just converted this bucket to a quick change bucket and I covered that in another video, but the problem this bucket has right now is that it does not curl enough. And I didn't cause that problem when I made it a quick change. It was like that when it used to pin on to my other machine. I'll show you what I mean. That's as much as I can curl the bucket. And that wouldn't be bad if I was just working on the ground all the time. You know, this is a grading bucket. It would work you know, really well to pull material away from the house or clean out ditches or something. But the problem is when you go to load a truck or even just lift the bucket up high, watch what happens. See, remember here, this is as much as I can curl in. So if I was picking up material, you know, this isn't even that high. Almost everything would be falling right out of the bucket and that'd be really frustrating. The nicest buckets I see in some machines, they can curl and almost touch the boom or in some cases even touch it. So let's see if we can fix this bucket to make it more useful for loading trucks or baling material. All right, and without making this a giant project, you know, obviously this is kind of a funky bucket. I could just go buy a new bucket that's, that's better than this one anyway. So if I spend a ton of time doing this, it doesn't make sense. But to do it quick, I think if I cut it right across the bottom here. So essentially what I want to do is have this I'm going to stay right where it is, but then pull, pull this out wider. So like if these are like a hinge, just pull this up and I want, well, I want it to curl a lot more than this. All right. So if it was curled up to hit the boom, geez, it'd need almost two feet. All right, so I, I got this, it's all straight line, so I don't have to cut any crazy shapes out. I'll cut it here, here, and I'm thinking I'll pull it open like a foot and see how that looks. Get that warm up. Fuck. 
think it can go a little bit more. All right, so now let's cut these plates out. So let's make a stencil. All right, there's our plate. Let's just make sure this fits the other side. All right, you know what? When I cut this side out, I'm just gonna add a half inch for this one. All right, when cutting out flat plates like this, this standoff helps, it keeps the, the tip off the material. Um, and it's also nice to have something to trace. That way you, you do nice straight lines. And I put the cement board here to keep from burning my floor. All right, that went pretty well. This plasma cutter really makes quick work of cutting out these shapes. I've had this piece of steel for probably 15 years and I've always been cutting shapes out of it. Um, and I used to use an angle grinder and it would just take forever to do this. The plasma cutter is so much easier and faster and cheaper because you're not buying anything. Except for these tips, but they last a long time and they're cheap. Um, another thing. If you need to cut out shapes like this but need a higher degree of accuracy, for what I'm doing here, this, this is fine. I mean, I'm easily within an eighth of an inch and on that thing, the way I'm overlapping the plates, it doesn't even matter. If you need stuff perfectly accurate, they sell, like it's called a plasma table where you lay this sh sheet on a table and then a computer will actually do all these shapes and you can program in any shape you want. Now that's something I kind of want to get into, but it's, you know, it's a little bit of an investment and, uh, you know, I'm doing a lot of stuff already, so. All right, let's go put these on. Sixteen and a quarter. Sixteen and a quarter, okay.
great. Well, that turned out pretty good. That bucket's nice. That's exactly what a bucket like that's good for with the smooth edge. You know, it does a real good job, you know, grading around a house or something where you need precision that you can't get with the teeth on the bucket. Plus the bucket's nice being so big, it's got really nice capacity now. And with the, you know, the angles being fixed, the thing does fine loading a truck. You know, the material doesn't just fall out of it when you try to lift it up in the air. So the other thing I want to use this bucket for, the last time I used this bucket, I used it for mixing concrete in the back of a dump truck and then used it to shovel the concrete out of the truck. And that worked really well. I definitely want to do that more often. And now since this bucket is a quick change and I have two machines that it fit, fits on, I'm a lot more likely to use it. I mean, in the past, this would pin onto my B50 and I've probably used the thing probably not even once a year. So... So that was one. What do you think, Levi? Levi. What do you think?